He's just recording the gameplay. <laughs> oh. He's testing, because he because he already built the computer, now he's testing it. And oh, then so that, are you actually playing the game, or is it like, already like a pre- like No, game? What, is it, what is it called? Benchmarking. Oh. Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here, and this is the next build video. So earlier this month, one of my friends approached me asking if I could build him a low price computer that was capable of doing video editing as well as some gaming on the side. He does a lot of video editing, and at the time, he was editing on an older Lenovo laptop that had a mobile Pentium processor in it uh, that's a few years old, but it only had a total of two threads and no dedicated graphics. So this thing was uh, pretty old and slow. Like whenever he was editing, he said it would just randomly freeze and lock up, which was pretty frustrating. And then once he got through that process and was ready to compile and render the video, he said it would just take forever. And that made sense because the laptop just didn't have the computing power. So he asked me if I could uh, build something for under $300 and he needed it as soon as possible. I told him I already had parts on hand so I could build something that fit his budget and suit his needs. So let's check out what I put together for him. So here's a shot of all the parts I used in the build prior to assembly. Most of the parts were used and as always I'll go over the decision making process behind each of the parts as well as their prices which includes taxes, shipping, and rebates if any, which in this build there were no rebates. First off let's look at this bundle which I got on Hardware Swap for $120. This includes the processor, motherboard, RAM, and Windows 10 operating system tied to the hardware. If we look at the breakdown of pricing it looks a little something like this. $25 for the motherboard, $50 for the CPU, $25 for the RAM, and $20 for the operating system. The CPU is the AMD FX8320 and for $50, I don't think I could have found a better option for the price. Other alternatives in the price range would have been on Intel side, like an i5 Sandy Ridge 2400, but the A320 has the added benefits of the extra threads. For something like video rendering, this is where it's going to come in handy. It'll also be able to hold its own in 1080p gaming, granted you pair it with the reasonable graphics card, and you're going to see that we will. The motherboard is an MSI 970A-G46 standard ATX board. I priced this at $25 because this motherboard does not pair too well with the A320 when it comes to overclocking. These are known for their VRMs overheating and if you try overclocking the higher core count chips like the A350 or A320 on it, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. The lower TDP chips like the FX4300 or the 6300 would have some room for overclocking but when you put a 125 watt A320 in it, it has to be run at stock. There used to be issues doing this, but now this is okay with the latest BIOS revisions and it's also officially compatible on their product page. If my friend feels the need to overclock in the future, I can swap out the boards for him and take this back and pair it with the lower TDD chip. But for now, this is going to work fine and you're going to see that the A320 performs pretty well at stock speeds. The RAM in the combo is 8GB of DDR3 HyperX Fury at 1866MHz. RAM prices have recently been at a high for like the fourth quarter of 2016, but it seems like prices are starting to slowly come down. So right now, a 8 gig kit for around $25 is a pretty good price. The previous owner had Windows 10 on this board already, so it's likely from the period when they had the free upgrades from Windows 7 and 8 to 10. If it didn't come with a deal, I would have just done the unactivated thing again and just have the watermark there. For the GPU, we have the PowerColor PCS Plus 7870. This is what was rebranded into the R9 270 and 270X. It falls in between the two in terms of performance depending on what version you get and how much is clocked out of the box. It does consume slightly more power, but the power supply we're using will more than cover it. This card goes three generations back and is almost five years old, but you're going to see that it still packs a punch. This was actually bought in pair with a 270X that I gave away in the last giveaway, and they were $80 a piece. I went with an aftermarket cooler for this build even though it's not being overclocked because AMD stock coolers are really loud. When the fan ramps up under load, they can sound like this. The Carwig M9 is perfect for this. It's built up an awesome reputation for outperforming even the legendary Cooler Master Hyper 212. It's better in almost every possible way. It's shorter so there's less side panel clearance issues. It's more compact so that it doesn't get in the way of the RAM. It runs quieter, it's cooler, it's easier to install. And best of all, that price. It's fixed at $20. Pretty much this is going to be my go-to aftermarket cooler for budget builds in the future when one is needed. The power supply is a new Seasonic 600 watt bronze rated unit. It was pulled from a brand new pre-built system and sold on eBay, so it's kind of like new open box. The cables aren't the prettiest thing in the world, but the case won't have a window, so we won't have to worry about that in terms of aesthetics. 
For storage, we have a 2.5 inch Hitachi 160 gigabyte hard drive that runs at 5400 RPM. I just needed something to hold the OS while I tested the system for stability and do the benchmarks. It was $5 from an older Craigslist ride along and my friend already had a spare hard drive that he eventually threw in. So this drive would just be cloned to that one. Last but not least, we have the case. We're going with the Rosewell Galaxy 1 on this. It was a bit pricier than I wanted, but that's because I haven't seen many sales for mid towers lately. I have plenty of smaller cases on hand for like $15 to $20, but they're limited to ITX and MicroATX boards. So this is what I had on hand that I picked up for $34.99. It's got a ton of good reviews on Newegg and it gets the job done. The nice thing about this compared to some of the really cheap cases that I usually tend to use is that it comes with more than one fan. You know, it has a fan in the front, the top, and the back. Assembling this build went really smoothly. It was actually the first time that I installed a Cryrig cooler and it's much easier to install than the Hyper 212 which is one of the main selling points of it and a lot of people are liking about it. I didn't run into any clearance issues with any of the parts and the case all around had pretty good amount of room to work in. i definitely buy it again in a pinch. The back panel has a generous pocket so I definitely made use of it to stuff all the extra cables in. This is what I ended up with in terms of the cable management. There's still some visible ketchup and mustard cables, but then we slide the side panel on and all of our problems go away. It booted up with no issues and I proceeded to install Windows 10 and the necessary drivers onto it. I forgot to grab a screen capture of the MSI afterburner settings for the overclocking, but I barely touched it at all. The PowerColor 7870 comes clocked at 1100 MHz out of the box. And I ran all the benchmarks at 1133 MHz, so that's 3%, which is almost negligible. So now onto the benchmarks. Unfortunately, I didn't run as many tests as I would have liked that showcases the 8320's capabilities when it comes to video editing and rendering. The only thing that I did run was the Cinebench R15 run, uh, the CPU run. But, you know, looking back, uh, I really should have done something like a handbrake test as well as like an X264 HD run. But hindsight's 2020, so what I'll do is I'll have a link down below to a non tech where you can compare the 8320 alongside a similarly priced Intel CPU. Uh, and it'll show, you know, how well the 8320 actually does. Uh, that'll be linked below, so definitely check that out after this video. But uh, other than that, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks.
overall, my friend has been enjoying the build. It's way better than what he was using before, and he's been video editing and gaming with it. So he's really happy with how it performs for the price. But let me know down below what you guys think of the build, and you know if it's something that if you have around three hundred dollars you would consider, or what you would change in it. Uh, you know, if you're not going to be editing, then you may go for like an Intel chip because then you could pair it with a slightly higher graphics card. Uh, but it's all going to depend on what you need it for and you know what you can find available at the time. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. So if you enjoyed it, then please be sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please check out the rest of my content. And if you enjoy that stuff, uh, consider subscribing so that you can uh, you know get updates on when I upload videos. And uh, in terms of announcements. Uh, next week's video is not going to be released next Sunday. It's going to be released this coming Wednesday, January the 25th, because that's my one year anniversary on YouTube. Be sure to hit that little bell notification thing uh, next to my channel name to let it alert you because it's not going to be uploaded at the regular time. And I would love for all of you to be there uh, for the, whatever I worked on that I'm going to be uploading. Uh, but other than that, uh, thank you as always for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the comment section as well as in the next video. Bye.